Hello everyone, this is Richard with the Modern Healthspan newsletter. First, a disclaimer. In this newsletter series, we will share the latest research studies, news and events in the Healthspan field that we found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. First, we would like to give a shout out to our supporters who are very generous to buy us some coffees. It encourages us to continue to share information on ageing research. Thank you so much for your support. In our last week's newsletter, we mentioned a synthetic form of NMN, NMNC. It is produced by Senec, a Swiss company. It seems the company is going to run a comprehensive set of clinical trials on NMNC. Among these trials, as NMN users, we are excited to see one to measure NAD plus levels in blood, a side-by-side -side trial for NMN versus NR, and finally a repeated dose trial. It is the first clinical trial using a dose of 1 gram, which is what most NMN users, including Dr. Sinclair, are actually taking. 80 participants will be involved taking either a placebo, 200, 600, or 1 gram of NMN for 60 days. And for the tolerance and NAD plus level trial, 20 participants will take 400 milligrams of NMN for 30 days. The expected completion date for both trials will be Q3 this year. Then side by side, NMN versus NR is a large scale and long term clinical trial involving 100 participants taking NMN 500 mg or NR 500 mg for 60 days. As so far there have been many arguments on which one is more effective, it will be interesting to see the result. It is good to see NMN trials using both larger doses and going beyond just safety. We shall keep you updated on any trial results that come out later this year. So please stay tuned. The first paper today is looking at the effect of spermidine supplementation in preserving younger phenotypes and in particular telomere length. Aging causes molecular, cellular and physiological deterioration including heart failure, neurodegeneration, metabolic maladaption, telomere attrition and hair loss. At the molecular level, the capacity to induce autophagy, a cellular recycling and cleaning process, declines with age. In the study, the authors gave spermidine, a natural inducer of autophagy, in the drinking water to aged mice and saw that it significantly attenuated some of the age-associated phenotypes. These included modulation of brain glucose metabolism, suppression of distinct cardiac inflammation parameters, decreased number of pathological sites in kidney and liver, and the decrease of hair loss. They note that this was associated with decreased telomere attrition, which might point to a novel cellular mechanism behind the anti-aging properties of spermidine. Let's have a look at a couple of the observed effects in the study. Here is the effect on fur the top mouse being the control and the lower one, the one with spermidine. And here is the data in graphical format which shows the clear improvement with spermidine in terms of area where the fur was lost. And here is a look at the glucose usage in the brain, comparing young, age control and aged with spermidine. In the conclusion, the authors point out spermidine is a substance that is naturally present in our body, which declines with age. This study links spermidine to cardioprotective effects and decreased telomere attrition, and possibly to brain glucose metabolism and reduced liver and kidney pathologies. And finally they note, these benefits come when spermidine was administered late in life, so it is worth investigating whether it will have a similar benefits in humans. I am certainly going to investigate whether I can increase my spermidine intake, either through diet, or whether I should take a supplement. Maybe it will help me restore my hair colour. Our next paper today is a write-up of rapamycin and rapalogs from Professor Dudley Lamming. Inhibition of mTOR1, which is the primary active component of mTOR, has been shown to promote health and longevity. And over the last decade, excitement has built up over the possibility that treatment with rapamycin, an mTOR1 inhibitor, can be used to treat or prevent age-related diseases. However, concerns remain over some of the side effects of rapamycin. In the paper, they propose that these are largely caused by mTORC2 inhibition, where mTORC2 is the second complex formed by mTOR. They then look at various ways to mitigate the side effects, but still get the benefits of mTORC1 inhibition. 
The author's conclusion is that it is time to further investigate therapies based on selective inhibition of mTORC1 for treatment or prevention of diseases of aging. Because rapamycin is known to suppress the immune system and cause metabolic disruption if used for long periods of time, this has limited the testing and adoption. The hope is that over the next decade more work with dogs and human clinical trials will begin to answer some of the unanswered questions. For those interested to learn more about these trials, especially the dog and human trials, please watch our interview series with Professor Matt Cabellin. Most of the side effects come from the inhibition of mTORC2. To understand more about mTORC1 and 2 and how they interact, please watch our interview series with Professor David Sabatini, where he talks in some depth on the subject. In the paper, they look at a number of ways to selectively inhibit mTORC1 including rapalogs for intermittent or short time periods, dietary interventions, and new mTORC1 specific molecules. Each strategy may come with unique side effects or limitations, and so it may differ by person or disease that is being treated. And the conclusion is looking forward to a safe way to reduce mTORC1 activation. This is an interesting take on rapalogs and echoes similar thoughts from Professor Cabellin around the dosage and timing of rapamycin that could make it more generally applicable. Our next paper looks at how declining stem cell function in the brain may cause decline in cognitive function, particularly memory as we age and how expressing certain genes can reverse this. Neural stem cells generate neurons throughout our life in the hippocampus. As we age, this generation of new neurons declines, which affects our memory, as the hippocampus is the core part of the brain related to memories. However, we are not clear what is happening at the cellular level. So in this paper, they looked at the levels of two proteins in the hippocampus, which change with age, lamin B1, which declines, and sun, domain-containing protein 1, or sun 1, which increases. By using a vector virus to restore lamin B1 levels, they showed increased stem cell activity in vitro and increased cell proliferation in vivo. And so they have identified a way to mediate the age-related decline of the generation of neurons in the mammalian hippocampus. And from a commentary on the paper, they identify lamin B1 as the protein central to the process of new cell generation. When the researchers increased lamin B1 levels, the stem cell division improved and the number of neurons grew. The research is part of several ongoing projects aiming to reactivate stem cells. The ability to regenerate damaged tissue generally declines with age, affecting almost all types of stem cells in the body. As they say, the study has focused on brain stem cells, but similar mechanisms are likely to play a key role in other stem cells. A very interesting study. If we can keep our stem cells reproducing and regenerating tissue, this has good prospects to help us keep our brains and other tissue young. Now our events corner. Here we have the Healthy Longevity series, hosted by Professor Brian Kennedy of the National University of Singapore. We mentioned this event in our earlier newsletter. They just revealed the March 4th and 11th guests. March 4th will be Elizabeth Parrish, CEO of BioViva Sciences USA. The topic will be gene therapy of human aging. Then March 11th guest will be Michael Grieve, CEO and founder of Kizu Technology Ventures at the Forever Health Foundation. You can find the registration link in the description. And finally, a tweet from Viziri Lab from Rockefeller University, New York, about a new manuscript showing volumetric calcium imaging of 1 million neurons across the mouse cortex at cellular resolution using light beads microscopy, or LBM. LBM provides an unprecedented opportunity for discovering the neurocomputations underlying cortex-wide encoding and processing of information in the mammalian brain. The paper was published on BioArchive on February 21st. For more details, please find the link in the description. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the Modern Healthspan newsletter informative. As we find more interesting research and longevity news, we will release our next newsletter. Please stay tuned. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support.
I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.